let me discuss the action of this anticholinergic drugs on the eye. Remember, this particular anticholinergic drugs will cause midriasis, right? Will cause midriasis, which is nothing but the dilatation of the pupil, and they will also cause cycloplegia, right? They will also cause cycloplegia. Now, what is this particular cycloplegia is loss of accommodation reflex is called as the cycloplegia. Now, you take this accommodation. In accommodation reflex, there are three important changes. That is the convergence of both the eyeballs, right? There will be the pupillary constriction and increase in the anterior curvature of the lens. So, these will be the changes in accommodation. When there is loss of accommodation, that is called as cycloplegia. Now, these anticholinergic drugs, they will cause cycloplegia. Now, what are the drugs which are used as the midriatics and as well as the cycloplegics? The drugs which will cause midriasis and as well as cycloplegia is like we have atropine, right? This will cause midriasis and as well as cycloplegia. Then we have homotropine, right? Then we have another very important drug which is called cyclopentolate. Right, cyclopentolate, and the other very most important drug that is your tropicamide. Right, tropicamide. So, remember, these are the drugs which will cause the midriasis and as well as cycloplegia, which is loss of accommodation. Now, you take this particular midriatic action. What is the use of this midriatic action? Midriasis is what it is the dilatation of the pupil. So, once the pupil is dilated the fundus examination becomes very easy. So remember, this particular midriatic action is useful in fundus examination. Okay, so this particular midriatic action is useful in fundus examination because when you observe the fundus, through the dilated pupil, the maximum part of the retina can be visualized. Right? The maximum part of the retina can be visualized. Now, where do we use this particular cycloplegic action? Right? Where do we use this particular cycloplegic action? Whereas, this particular cycloplegic action allows the correct assessment of the refractive errors. Right? So, for the assessment of Right, for the assessment of refractive errors, we use this particular cycloplegic action of this anticholinergic drugs. Right now, because why they are used in the assessment of the refractive errors is due to loss of the error resulting from accommodation. Because of the accommodation reflex, there will be the loss of error. So, remember this particular cycloplegic action, it is useful for the assessment of the refractive errors. Next, the other actions with of these anticholinergic drugs in the eye is, now you take a clinical condition which is called as iridocyclitis. Right, you take a clinical condition which is called as iridocyclitis. In this particular iridocyclitis, there is a pain within the eye. Now, why do you think that there is pain within the eye is that occurs due to that occurs due to spasm of the ciliary muscles, right? So due to spasm of the Right? Due to spasm of the ciliary muscles, there is pain of your iridocyclitis. Now, this particular pain in iridocyclitis, which is occurring due to spasm of the ciliary muscles, that can be relieved due to cycloplegic action. Right? This is one very, very important point. The pain due to spasm of the ciliary muscles in iridocyclitis can be relieved due to cycloplegic action of this anticholinergic drugs. Okay, so this spasm can be relieved by
okay this particular spasm can be relieved by the cycloplegic action next the another important point is now what are the drugs which are causing midriasis and as well as cycloplegia we have atropine homotropine cyclopentolate and as well as tropicamide out of which you take this particular atropine atropine it is having a very long duration of action so remember the atropine action on the eye it has very long duration of action of nearly around 3 to 5 days therefore this particular atropine it is avoided in adults okay so atropine has long duration of action of nearly around right of nearly around 3 to 5 days within the eye because of their long duration of action this particular atropine is avoided in adults okay this is avoided in adults whereas you take in other organs in other organs this atropine has short duration of action okay whereas within the eye it is having longer duration of action that is the reason why they are avoided in adults now you take this another important drug that is the hyoscine which is nothing but the scopolamine the hyoscine it possesses similar cycloplegic action of the atropine and more potent midriatic action compared to that of the atropine okay so even your hyoscine right even your hyoscine it also possesses similar cycloplegic action and more potent midriatic action compared to that of the atropine right so it also causes midriasis and as well as cycloplegia right but the point is even you take your hyoscine the duration of action of this particular hyoscine is also long right long duration of action but a point that you should remember is but the point you should remember is the duration is long duration of action but less than atropine right this particular hyoscine will not act for nearly around 3 to 5 days within the eye okay next you take this particular atropine like what did we discuss in the eye it is having long duration of action whereas in other organs it is having the short duration of action now when you are using the conventional systemic doses of atropine the conventional systemic doses of atropine it they have very little effect on the eye okay so if you take this atropine conventional systemic doses of this particular atropine has minimal effect on the eye right minimal effect on the eye is that clear whereas the equal doses of the scopolamine will produce definite midriasis and as well as cycloplegia so the systemic doses of atropine it has minimal effect on the eye whereas the systemic doses of the scopolamine or your hyoscine will produce the midriasis and as well as the cycloplegia is that clear next now you take among all these drugs let me tell you one important multiple choice question here among all these drugs the shortest acting midriatic is tropicamide right this will be an important multiple choice question so tropicamide remember it is the shortest acting midriatic is that clear next now because these anticholinergic drugs they are causing the midriasis that is dilatation of the pupil these drugs they are contraindicated in case of glaucoma because these anticholinergic drugs they will further increase the intraocular pressure that is the reason why these drugs are contraindicated in treatment of glaucoma 
okay so anticholinergic drugs they are contraindicated in glaucoma right this is a very very important point next so this is completely about the actions of the anticholinergic drugs on the eye so remember on the eye these drugs they will cause midriasis and as well as cycloplegia and the drugs are mainly the atropine homotropine cyclopentolate and as well as tropicamide and the midriatic action is useful for the fundus examination that is retina can be clearly visualized and you take the cycloplegic action that is for the assessment of the refractive errors and pain in case of iridocyclitis due to spasm of the ciliary muscles can be relieved by your cycloplegic action and then you take this particular atropine atropine it is having the long duration of action within the eye right the duration of action is nearly for around 3 to 5 days that is the reason why it is avoided in adults whereas in other organs the atropine action is for short duration of action and you take this particular hyoscine hyoscine will also cause the midriasis and as well as cycloplegia and it also has the long duration of action but not compared to that of your atropine duration of action and conventional doses of atropine it will cause it has very minimal effects on the eye whereas similar systemic doses of hyoscine will cause midriasis and as well as cycloplegia and the shortest acting midriatic is tropicamide and if you take the anticholinergic drugs they are contraindicated in patients with glaucoma